All right, so as you're finishing up the IRAT, so you just took this IRAT. If you're in a medical student classroom, you're going to turn in this IRAT for a grade. If you're in a residency classroom, you're just going to kind of have taken it, and I usually don't grade my residents on the IRAT. And so now you're going to move into teams, and I as an instructor am going to assign those teams. Um, usually in team-based learning, you want to assign the teams because otherwise um, the the group formations are not the way you want them. I usually like to put a PGY1, a PGY2, a PGY3, and a medical student together. And what's really great is when we have our combined conferences with our PEDS Emergency Medicine Fellows, we have one fellow. And so that's really great because the fellow can provide some teaching as you're doing the group application exercise and the group readiness assessment test together. So now you're going to move on to the group readiness assessment test. And this is the group readiness assessment test right here. This is the one with the scratch off stickers. And these are really easy to make. Um, you just print it off and then you basically apply the scratch off stickers to um, the, the paper. So you guys are going to be a group right here. We're going to be a group right here. You guys will be a group right here, and then you guys will be a group right here. And your groups ideally are between about three and six learners. Um, I, like, I like three to four learners personally. And so what you're going to do is you're going to complete this GRAT together. Now the object of this is that you want to get as few uh, numbers scratched off as possible. So you want to answer the question right the first time. So don't just like scratch down all the way here and say like which one was the answer. You want to choose which one was the answer and if you're correct there will be a star or a check mark underneath it. Um, so go ahead and you guys can debate answers you know based on what your individual readiness assessment was. Go ahead and see if you can get the fewest scratches to a correct answer ratio. And if you're and right there's a Yeah, so go ahead and do you're gonna do you're gonna do one G rat all together. So you just we gave you a bunch for examples, but you're gonna do one G rat all together. Do you need one? Oh you got one. You'll be the one scratching. Thank you. Oh thank you. You're amazing. Did you guys get a star? You did? Good job, Shaka. Oh, you guys are three for three. Good job. How are you doing? You gotten any, gotten any right yet? Okay, okay. So as students, you could kind of debate and say, oh, I think it's A, I think it's B, and then you kind of make your case. And when you start getting wrong answers, you'll realize, oh, we need to spend a little more time discussing these before we actually commit to an answer. You guys are superstars.
sent me the agenda. Man, you guys are like superstars. So now that you guys have finished, a couple other groups are finishing up, but now you would move on. So as an instructor, would you either go over these answers with you, or you guys just already figured it out on your own? So you can use instructor time just for answering questions, or people may actually debate with you, they might say, no, I thought it was a deep part for this person, um, and if they can come up with good evidence for that debate, then we'll talk about that in class. So what you'll move on to next is you move on to the group application exercise. And why don't you guys, why don't you three do it together and then you three do it together just so it's a little easier for dynamics. But this is when you're really applying the knowledge. This is when you're going to do those patient scenarios. Um, and so this is your group application exercise for cookies. Um, and so you'll answer these questions and you'll use that knowledge that you gained through the free reading, solidified through that GRAP and the IRAP, and then you're going to apply it now. So go ahead and do that GAE together. And then you guys go ahead and do a GAE together. That's this one. All right, how'd you guys do? Did you do the, the GRAP? Great. All right, so as you guys are finishing up the GRAP, now I as an instructor can either go over the answers, but you guys already know the answers because you had that immediate feedback, um, that immediate feedback assessment technique. And so I don't need to go over the answers. Instead, I can use the class time for clarifying questions. So if you said, no, I don't think the answer to number two is very pale. I think the answer is flat. And I could say, well, actually, there were two correct answers for number two. Um, and so you can use that time to ask questions. So now, as an instructor, you're going to have the class move on to the group application exercise. So why don't the three of you do the group application exercise, the three of you do a group application exercise together so you can see what that dynamic is. And this is when you're going to apply that knowledge that you solidified through the GRAT. And you would use, a, obviously, patient scenarios in real life, but these will be cookie scenarios now. So once you guys have done the GRAT, you can go ahead and move on to the group application. Where's my time? Uh, you have no. Oh, good. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I think I'll just not. Remember everything? Uh, <coughs> What's up? Is that one at is that is that one? Cord. Cord. I did the one at Cord. Oh, did you? Okay, so you're like Yeah, but I, I tried to do it Okay. So you're on your own. All right, 
So now, as an instructor, we're going to have the wrap-up session. And the wrap-up session is kind of one of the most important parts of team-based learning because we're going to solidify some answers. We're going to clarify some concepts. People are going to have the opportunity to, answer, um, to ask questions to you. And this is really kind of the lecture portion of it because you're kind of spending the time providing your knowledge as an expert and answering your learners' questions. So what I would do as an instructor is I'm now going to call on my teams, and I'm going to call on my teams to answer the questions for me. So go ahead and we'll call you guys Team 1. Team 1, can you read the first question for me and answer the question for me? Thicker cookies. And we came up with, we'll add more brown sugar. We couldn't quite tell because the ingredients say margarine, but the directions say butter. But we would aim with more margarine for that. Uh, and then yep, that's, that's number one. Perfect. Great. Yeah, so you're going to change the ratio of brown to white sugar. You're going to increase your brown sugar. You're going to potentially use less flour. And then you're going to, the if the recipe calls for butter, you're going to change that potentially to margarine. Great. Any questions about that? I would ask. Uh, you, hopefully you guys don't have any burning cookie questions. Um, okay, so group number two, can you guys read and answer um, question number two for me? What other changes to the recipe other than ingredients could help contribute to softer, thicker cookies? We said higher temperature for less time. Perfect. Great job, group two. So yes, you're right. Cook at a higher temperature for less time. And then group three, are you guys prepared to answer um, question number three? Great. Um, so go ahead and read me the question and answer it. Uh, discuss ways to edit the ingredients to crisper browner cookies, uh, butter and white sugar. Right, so you're going to add more flour and you're going to change the ratio of white to brown sugar, increasing the amount of white sugar. So team-based learning. So those are all the steps. We have the learner responsible content, so something that they do at home. You have the individual readiness assessment, assessment or assurance test. You have the group readiness assessment or assurance test. And then you have the group application exercise, with the group application exercise being the most important thing. Right? That's when our learners are really going to apply knowledge. This is why we're doing the flipped classroom, so that people can come to class and they can apply concepts rather than just memorizing things. So those are the things. So what's modified TBL? Modified TBL is what I do with my resident learners because, like I said, they're not all going to read your learner responsible content. They're not all going to watch the podcast. And so either you can have them do the learner responsible content at the beginning of the class or you can just do something that eliminates it. So, for example, you could have an EKG TBL where they should already have some baseline knowledge and they're just going to use that baseline knowledge that they've kind of learned through their however many years of residency to do this. And this is just a fun way to mix up conference. So do I do 100% team-based learning in conference? No, we can't have four hours of team-based learning because the, the residents are going to go off track. You'll see that you guys start to talk about different things. You know, at the end, you're done talking about cookies, and then you're going to talk about this interesting patient you had the other day. Um, and so you can't do four hours of team-based learning. But it is nice. We do a one hour, you know, 30 minutes of lecture, and then we do an hour and a half of team-based learning, and then we do another 30-minute lecture, and then we do an oral boards case or a simulation case or something like that to really mix up our conference day. Um, I want to go back to, oh, yes. So, um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, when we do TBL, we usually have the groups like hold up their answer and mm -hmm. have them do all multiple choice. Do you think it's better to do open-ended questions for application or? I think, I think for the IRAT and the GRAT, it's good to have multiple choice questions or short answer questions where there really is only one right answer. But I think for the group application exercise, I really think you should challenge them to think outside the box and to have to come up with answers. Like I feel like they should be quote unquote treating a patient in the group application exercise. Like what lab tests would you order? What, um, you know, these labs come back and they show this. What's your differential diagnosis? What steps are you going to take in management? And so it's more of like an oral boards case rather than, um, rather than like a, a multiple choice question case. So I like MCQs for the IRAT and the GRAT, and then I like um, open-ended questions for the group application exercise. Um, and then this is something I just wanted to bring this up. We talked about the IFAT. You can buy those scratch-off stickers. Dr. Ray dropped some of these off. You can take them home. You can just buy these on Amazon. They're really cheap. Just Google, you know, scratch off stickers. And you can cut these out to meet your needs and stick those over the answers. Or you can buy these IFAT cards from um, Epstein yeah. Educational or something yeah. like that is the name of the company. That, it's like the only place you can buy them from. Yeah, it's like there's one company. I think it's Epstein Educational. And they have these pre-filled ones. And 
it's automatically an answer key. So you buy the key, like, for example, you're going to buy this key as being D, B, A, B, or whatever. And there's like 20 different keys. And so you can, you can choose which key you want to buy, or you can just buy a bunch of them and then make your questions according to that key. So obviously you want to mix it up, otherwise your residents are going to catch on that it's always the same answers. Um, so don't be cheap and only buy like one set. Um, so that's the IFAT. And then we talked about, um, we talked about modified team-based learning and modifying it um, for team-based learning for your resident learners. Has this been studied in residency education? It has, not quite much. There, the literature in residency education isn't very excellent. It's very small studies, um, doesn't necessarily show a lot of impact. It's been studied widely in medical education, undergraduate medical education. The literature is okay. Does it say that we're improving patient outcomes? No. It says potentially that learners are able to apply concepts or apply knowledge a little bit better and think outside the box a little bit better. Some of those studies have shown that. However, there haven't been huge large studies that are showing kind of higher level um, outcomes like we would want in medical education literature. But I think it's a good way to utilize the flipped classroom. It's a good way to mix up your conference day. It's a good way um, to just get away from the standard lecture. It's a good way to utilize technology because you're going to be utilizing technology via your learner responsible content, either with a podcast or that you made, a podcast that you found online, a blog post. So this is a way that you can use foam, use your own podcast to, to and, then, um, and then incorporate them into class. And so any questions about team-based learning? Yes, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. If the podcast is 10 minutes, maybe I'll listen to it. If it's two to five minutes, I'll definitely listen to it. Otherwise, I'm skipping and reading the content. So right. I don't know if there's like an ideal length of a podcast where you keep people's attention or thoughts on that. Totally. I think that's a great question. I think... Um, you know, some studies that we've done as to whether learners are like watching um, podcasts when we do team-based learning, and it's, they watch, you know, 40% of the podcasts. They're definitely not watching 100% of them. So that's why I, th I agree with you, shorter is better. You can even just do a mini lecture at the beginning of class, and you can just say, hey, these are the, you know, five things we're gonna talk about today. Um, these are some, this is some background knowledge I want you to have, 10 slides, 10 minutes. Um, I think that those are kind of ideal for our resident learners. Um, just these short snippets. They, you know, we obviously say there's some literature that supports that shorter lectures are better. Um, so I would agree with you that, that you'd want to do shorter. But it doesn't necessarily even have to be a podcast, too. It could just be like a foam article. So, yeah. So um, is uh, IRAP and GRAP, how do they use uh, both at the same time, or is it like either or? Great question. So the question was, do you use IRAT and GRAT? Do you always use those together? Um, do you, do you, is one or the other? So in class of team-based learning, you should have learner responsible content, IRAT, and then GRAT, and then um, group application exercise. But that's for medical undergraduate medical education. And that's important because the IRAT they're turning in to make sure that they did the reading, and then the GRAT they're kind of getting a group grade. But I think for our resident learners, I definitely don't think you have to do it all. I, I usually just call it an IRAT and then they end up doing it as a GRAT and then I just move on to the group application exercise. So that's usually how I do it. Um, and then sometimes you just do a group application exercise because I think it's interesting to talk about cases and then it's not really team-based learning necessarily but it, you know, it has some elements of it. Any other questions about team-based learning? Yes. Sort of a question. Thanks. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I, I got off the plane an hour ago and I intended to get you cookies. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the faculty learned how to use all books. Uh huh. And readjusted the schedule a lot and got it down to uh, most weeks go like two hours. Uh huh. So it's usually 60 minutes of power. We have one bad day a month where it's just not straight through. Uh huh. Um, but now asking my faculty to go back, whether it's this technique or another, is to scrap that lecture they worked really hard to build and now have gotten comfortable with when they're not really comfortable with the environment. How do you motivate your faculty to say, hey, this might not be the best? Totally, yeah. So I think that 
there, there's a couple important elements. So number one, faculty development. And this like module that we just did today, it's available online um, at JetEM. Um, a, a Journal of Education, Teaching, and Emergency Medicine. So you can download all this. So you could potentially go through this module with them to teach them team-based learning. The second thing I think is to lead by example, and that's kind of what we've been doing at UCI, is to where we're really changing the curriculum so that, that, that there's at least one or two team-based learning per week. Um, the third thing is, is I think it is so much easier to do a good TBL than it is to do a good lecture. Like, it's so much easier. Like, all I have to do is I just have to know the content really well and then I just have to come up with questions to ask the residents about that are going to just explore their knowledge. And I just need to find like a good blog or, you know, foam or something that I approve that I think is good. I, so the faculty that I, I've been able, that we've been able to convince to do it, I tend to really like it because it actually, it actually is less preparation. And it's more engaging, I think, for the residents as well. Um, I mean, not necessarily always more engaging, but um, I think, you know, when you mix it up, it makes conference more engaging. Um, so if you could kind of get your, uh, sorry, one more thing. We have, um, so we have education fellows and then we have our, our residency leadership. And each of us um, oversees a conference block in addition to the chiefs overseeing a conference block, in addition to a faculty member overseeing the conference block. And so our job as residency leadership is to make sure that they're making the conference engaging. And so whichever faculty is in charge that month, I say, oh, hey, this would be great as a TBL, like would you mind making that? And then they're only making necessarily like one TBL a year. Um, and then you can kind of mentor them on that to teach them how to do it. Yes? Me. Yeah, I mean it definitely wastes a lot of trees, team-based learning. We have like resurrected um, all this paper that we're like recycling all the time. But uh, yeah, you could absolutely do this digitally. Um, you could do this through like audience response software. And we'll talk about audience response software a little later. Um, and I think for the group application exercise, you could just write the questions on a dry erase board and they could, you know, type the answers or they can just write down the answer on a scratch piece of paper. So you don't necessarily have to waste all the paper. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll, and we'll talk about audience response offer a little bit later. Yes. Can I, what's, what was the question one more time, Clancy? Oh, can you ask him to do it at home? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, a great potential way to modify it. Um, again, it's not necessarily classic team-based learning, but you could certainly modify it and have them do the I read at home um, and then come in and just do the, the group application exercise. Oh, the ratio? Great question. So you could, that's the one of the advantages of team-based learning is you only need one instructor for up to 100, 200 learners. And so that's the nice thing. And But it is nice to have higher level learners at each group so that they can kind of help with, with answering some of those questions. That's why it's really fun to have a fellow, um, like for, for pediatric emergency medicine or um, yeah, the, our med ed fellows, but also like ex content expert fellows, like toxicology fellows and things like that for your talks block. I'm going to, oh, yes. Can I just ask one more question? About yes. Timing? Yes. Because I'm always off on timing. Mm -hmm. I'm at this pace. And yes. I'm always way off. And I'm kind of frustrated because I can't stick to it all. And it's almost like a trial and error. Yes. I don't know if you have an idea of like per question, you know, if you do an open ended discussion, you know, how much time do you allow for that? I usually, it's usually, so I usually do about one case with maybe about four or five questions where it's like, what's the differential? What's, what labs would you order? That takes, um, I think, about 20 minutes or so. So, yeah, is what I usually give them. Yeah, five minutes for a question usually. We better move on to the next item. One of, the, one of the things about getting your faculty to do this is the first time that they experience it, it's chaos because the students are talking, they're walking around, they're, and so faculty that are used to, I'm standing here, you're listening to me, you're quiet, um, it freaks them out. And so that was the first sort of the hurdle we had to get over because um, the first time I did it with our students, or with our residents, the faculty were sitting, you know, in the back on the side row, and they're all like, oh my God, this is chaos. But then once they figured out, well, they're, this, the residents are actually excited and talking about what they're supposed to be doing. They're not shopping Zappos while I'm trying to lecture. 
So it takes a little bit of a hurdle to get them through that. But once they get it, they're like, that was amazing. So I think that's a hurdle to get over with your faculty development. And we have, um, and we have some good examples of good TBLs on JetEM too that you can download and just and try with your learners.